hospitals, that's the sector which is in focus. Why are investors queuing up for hospitals right now? What is the outlook for the sector? And post the IHS Fortress uh, deal, uh, what is the demographic like? And is there a case for investing in hospitals? To pose all these questions, we've got on board Vikram Shah, the CMD at Shalvi Hospitals joining in. Vikram, morning. Uh, tell us about really what's going on with the hospital sector because it's a little puzzling as to a deal like Fort is going through had so much investor interest despite most players not making money, great margins or ROEs. What do you think was building so much interest in Fortis? Well, uh, typically uh, healthcare sector long term story is very much intact and uh, 4000 crore rupee of investment of IHH uh, in 40s proves it and uh, India needs lot of healthcare related infrastructure in tier 1, 2, 3 cities and it is going to take good 10, 15 years to build this. Having said this, there are good times, bad times, challenging times in every industry and uh, those kind of time come and go two years back there was great time lot of people came in business and people who did not know came in the business where they did not understand this business and in service industry if the people don't understand business they are not going to do well because service industry is not as easy as what you do in manufacturing or branding and other things Service industry, unless you know how you are going to work, it's like airline industry that uh, one airline is making huge amount of money and uh, the other is losing with the same kind of uh, market share. So it's very important that uh, how you are working, what you are doing, as, as far as we are concerned, we are able to keep our margins intact even though, even though there are headwinds. So, you know, we are doing very well. So it all depends on how you understand this business. It is not everybody's cup of tea. That is one thing. Okay. Uh, Dr. Vikram, morning. Nikunj Dalme also joining in. The fact that uh, you're wearing uh, green attire, I hope we didn't drag you out of your uh, morning surgery commitments. Uh, can you speak little loudly? I'm not able to hear you. No, no, this is Nikunj from the Mumbai studio. The fact that uh, you are wearing uh, the green outfit, I mean, it normally is worn by doctors before they have to go for a surgery. So I hope we didn't drag you out for this interview. Yeah, yeah well, I will be going soon after uh, this interview in the surgery only. So that's why I have changed myself. <laughs> so I'm glad what we, have, we do all day. I'm, I'm glad we're having this conversation. Now, the, my next question to you, and I'm asking this not uh, a renowned surgeon, but I'm asking this who is the promoter and an owner of Shalby Hospital. If I look at the track record of Indian hospitals, yes. they are growing, but the challenge for them is that they also have a very strong capex commitment. Uh, so do you think somewhere for Indian hospital or the Indian uh, you know, hospital sector to come out with very strong profits in the near term could be a challenge because demand is great, but in order to cater to that demand, you will also be investing continuously. Well, this is a good observation. Answer to this is, the companies which are able to keep their margins intact while growing, they do well. Like, you know, like last 10 years, we have been able to keep our margins about 25 percent and we came to 2000 beds without incurring much debt. We are today zero debt company and having still 25 percent plus margins. So are you earning? Then you can put back the money. As far as the real estate and other thing is concerned for healthcare, cheaper uh, land and other things are always available. And if you are going to build something at one and a half crore rupee per bed, the viability of that project is going to be questionable in a coming time. Maybe 10 years it will take to come out of that project. So you do decent work with 50 lakh rupee per bed and then you are able to come out in three to five years time. And the whole cycle of investing and getting back your money goes correct. 
if you don't have margin, if you spend too much, then the whole math goes wrong. So, but are the dynamics now intact, uh, sir, for the industry? You know, stuff like uh, medical tourism, which was extremely fast growing, but hasn't in that sense been able to take up as uh, anticipated. Well, as far as medical tourism is concerned, it is growing, it is growing well, it, it is growing 10 to 15 percent per annum. But let me tell you, the local demand is so much that uh, no company is going to make or thrive, going to thrive on uh, medical tourism. It is icing, it is, is, is icing on the cake. But your cake is your domestic market. It's a huge domestic market. People want good treatment. People want good doctor. People want good infrastructure. It is something like roti, kapda and makan and then comes the health. So people want it good and people want to go to a good place. So you know it is a more of a domestic demand than the medical tourism I would say. And uh, we continue to grow 30% plus for years to come and we will continue to grow same way. So I don't see any problem anywhere there. It is all about sentiment uh, all the time rather than, you know, real fact. Uh, my next follow-up question, I guess, would be centered around the fact that currently there is a cap in place for two important surgeries, uh, cardiac and hip and knee replacement. Now, cardiac is not a mainstay for you, but hip and, hip and knee yes. replacement is a very major business for Shalby Hospitals. That's your core specialization. That is your USP. So, post yes. the new norms which have come out from the government, what has been the change there? And will this affect your business in a meaningful manner? Well, uh, government will always do something right for common people. And as far as we are concerned, we want to do more work. Now, the knee implant cap came 15 August last year. We have still grown and we have still our margins intact. We are growing at 30% per annum, our margins are 25% plus. So, we, we, we are doing the same way. They have not kept hospital charges, they have kept implant charges. So, then we are able to grow more because we are getting implant cheaper than before. Can you also, you know, give me a broader sense about how much of your current business is coming from patients who enjoy healthcare benefits and those who don't enjoy healthcare benefit? The reason why I'm asking you this question is because if the healthcare insurance is growing, I'm sure a lot of surgeries would be covered, and that will just increase the indirect. Uh, uh, you know, indirect demand for hospitals. So, can you quantify a number for us? Well, presently we are uh, doing about 50% uh, uh, self-paying, 30% uh, uh, insurance base and 20% uh, corporates. And f finally, just to get a you know, number going about, of, uh, ab you know, of, sp of Shalby hospitals. Could you just outline the current size or the number of beds you currently have which are under operation? How many new beds are you likely to add in the course of yeah. FY19? And what is your profit per bed? Well, uh, as far as uh, number of operational beds are concerned, they are nearly uh, uh, 1,200. We have capacity of 2,000 beds built already. So we are 2,000 bed capacity, 1,200 beds are operational. And when you talk about per bed profit, it is, I will have to calculate uh, per operational bed profit would come to around uh, 1,200 uh, uh, divided by 120 crores that is our uh, 100 uh, crores that is our EBITDA so that is how it works out at uh, anything else oh Dr. Vikram appreciate your time I know we've uh, uh, taken some valuable time of yours before the surgery so keep up the good work sir I am well aware of the kind of good work you've done in the area of knee replacement and hip replacement uh, so keep up the good work. Uh, you know we are a big admirer of the kind of healthcare services you are providing. So thank you for your time. Always a pleasure to have you on um, on ET now. Thank you.